I tried to kill her everything and what we Holy shit! <laughs> what an amazing reaction! Oh, so natural. <laughs> Excellent. Okay, thank you all so much for coming out tonight. This is Laughter Laughs at the Aftermath. Let me give you a brief rundown of our two shows. Same uh, recording session. You got me, boom, Tammy Chan. Uh, 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 okay. And we got uh, <laughs> we got we got Tim Chan, we got Garen Chu, we got Ashley James, and then we got Ailey Slater headlining the first half. All right, great. Here we go. What does this say? Predators. Okay, guys. Doesn't, doesn't the term sexual predators make them sound a lot cooler than they actually are? You know? Like, think about predators in the animal kingdom, you know? They're faster. They're stronger. They're more cunning, you know? Sexual predators, you know, they don't have to be any of those things. They don't have to be fast or strong. They just need a Reddit account, right? <laughs> Um, yeah, man, like, you know, so you've never, like, you know, been informed about what actual sexual predators are, you know, and you read, like, oh, aliens versus predators, man, I hope the aliens win. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They sound a lot more agreeable <laughs> than predators, yeah. Recently, I learned that British people uh, have a different connotation for the word diary, right? Yeah, British people, the word diary can also mean planner, you know? Uh, Americans, Canadians, we never say the word diary like that. We only use diary to refer to as like our personal diary, you know? Yeah? It's cute, right? Okay, premise. Here is the punchline. So, <laughs> the, other day, the other day I booked Bav on the show, and Bav was like, oh yeah, cool, um, I'll write in my diary, right? So in my mind, he was like, oh. Dear Diary, today Tambi booked me on a show. I'm gonna be a star. I guess I was like complaining at the Chinese restaurant before the show, you know? I was complaining to this waiter. I was like, hey man, your food sucks, but outside, it says you got like a Michelin star, you know, what gives? And the waiter goes, oh, that's not for Michelin. You see, that's my aunt, holy shit. <laughs> All right, your first act of the evening, guys, <laughs> is a uh, really, really funny dude. He has, um, what'd you do, like headline shows in Melbourne? And like you sold out, like what, six shows? They're very funny. <laughs> Tim Chan, everyone. Yeah, I'm, I'm broke, I'm very broke. <laughs> but don't trust me on stage because I have an assistant and I have a cameraman and then I have a manager today. Wow, wow, I'm crazy. <laughs> and then oh, I just I just focus on the camera, and then I talk to you and say, I don't care about China. <laughs> but 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 nowadays it's very scary, you know. You, you know, in this stage, this little space is my final space for me to have a freedom. Yeah. After I get off the stage, I love China. <laughs> yeah, I love China. Yeah. yeah. So, if if you are a girl and you are from overseas, please, please, marry me. <laughs> Even if you are a guy. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. <laughs> but nowadays, everyone just hates Carrie Lam now. But you know what? I don't hate her. Yeah, I don't hate her. Because she motivates me, she motivates me so much. You no, know, uh, uh, last week, not today. Last week, I went to the gym. <laughs> I went to the gym, and and then when I do the last push, I was like, "Wow, I can't do it! I can't do it!" My friend would say, "Come on, one more, one more!" No, I can't do it! I can't! Come on, one more, one more! You can do it! No, no! Please help me! Fuck Kareem! Fuck Kareem! Okay, fuck her! Yeah, fuck Kareem! <laughs> Yeah, so she motivates me. <laughs> Just kidding, I don't want to fuck her. <laughs> Any, anyway, um, <laughs> do you know what's the difference between Hong Kong people and the other? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you are very supportive. Hong Kong people are very efficient, you know. 
Hong Kong people are, are very efficient. Even today, I have 20 minutes. And then we say, oh, you're so funny. I give you 20 minutes. I say, fuck you. Give me 15. <laughs> because I'm, I have efficient. So I'm 15 now. <laughs> and, and, then, and then you know what's the difference between Hong Kong people and the others is we, we are very efficient. Even the morning greeting. We just say hi and then back to work immediately. But do you know what you guys do? <laughs> You <laughs> say, how are you? How's it going? Whoa, it wastes me so much time. <laughs> yeah, I just want to back to work. I don't want to hear your yesterday breakup story. <laughs> first, first of all, I know you don't care about my life. <laughs> yeah. Second of all, it's very selfish because it's a question. You're not only wasting your time, you also need me to waste my time to reply to you. I'm fine, thank you. Wow, I hate that. <laughs> and do you know what I need to do next? I need to ask him, back, how are you again? <laughs> it is crazy. And so you know what, what, what shop I hate most? I hate Starbucks because I just want a cappuccino. Why do you need my name? <laughs> Every time I, hey, what's your order? A uh, cappuccino. And what's your name? <laughs> None of your business. <laughs> I need to write on the comment there and give him. Okay, Tim, Tim. Uh, how is spell? Tim. T I M, Tim. Oh, okay. Uh, what's your order again? Wow, fuck that. <laughs> Just give me the cappuccino and get out. So I hate that. And sometimes my anger is not very good. So. Uh, some some anger sentence I don't understand. Like uh, I can't agree more. First <laughs> first time I hear that I I I did oh I can't agree more. Uh, you you don't agree? <laughs> <laughs> no no no! I can't agree more means that is the maximum level of my agree. Maximum level so strong. <laughs> okay okay okay. Thank you for your agree. <laughs> <laughs> So this is so crazy for me. What do you mean so maximum level of agree? So when I say I'm a boy and you say I, I can't agree more, that means you will pull down my pants and flick my dick. Oh, you are really a man. You are really a man. I prove that. Yeah. But you will not pull out because it's a little bit more. <laughs> so crazy. <laughs> just, just tell the old jokes to the, old, to the, to the comedians. Oh, that's cool, man. And then, uh, what the other old jokes? Um, uh, oh, yeah. Anyone is a sock guy here? Oh, you, you're, you're the national security law from me. Oh, okay. Out of China. Okay. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> well, I don't go. Uh, anyway. Uh, I'm a sock guy. Anyone is a sock guy here? Like me, whoa, yeah, wow, so many people. I'm a short guy, but you know what? In Halloween, you don't need to dress up because you will fail to pretend anything. Yeah, last last year, I just I just want to get the candy with my nephew, so I was I was training to be very strong. I pretend to be a, a Wolverine, X Men Wolverine. Wow, so strong! And then whole shirt, I wear the yellow shirt. And then each hand, I have three fake nails. When I ring the bell, the woman comes up at me and say, Yo, Pika Pikachu! <laughs> so that's not good. <laughs> we fail to pretend anything. And then I good news for the ladies. I'm single. Yeah. Tonight. Tonight. <laughs> yeah, it's just my girlfriend isn't here. And <laughs> she is with another man. So I will be single tomorrow too. <laughs> yeah, this is oh you are laughing so hard. This is a very stupid ah oh, I, I love to see the freshman in here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, and then uh, you know what? Oh this this joke is very stupid, but uh, but I love this joke so much. Because because the only four sentences I five punch lie. I'm really a genius. <laughs> yeah, six. <laughs> I'm still counting a Chinese man. <laughs> and you know, you know what I what I expect? I expect uh, when uh, expect le. <laughs> I expect when the audience hear my these jokes, they will, first of all, oh, you are single. 
Oh, so poor team. Oh, you're single. Oh, you have another, another girlfriend. Oh, this is good for you. You have a girlfriend. <laughs> and now I say uh, he's with another man. Oh, oh, poor little team. Oh, you, you, she cheat on you. Oh, so poor little team. <laughs> and then I say, oh, I'm a single again. And then she's like, oh, you're single again. Oh, you're so smart. You treat on oh, you. You just play my mind. Oh, you're so 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 smart, so smart. I give you my number. So I hope this will happen. This will be happen. But no, everyone just think, oh, you are single. This is the same as my first impression. <laughs> and then I say, oh, I have a girlfriend. Oh, you have a girlfriend? Oh, this surprised me so much. But she cheated on me. Oh, she cheated on me. This is so funny, you stupid asshole. So <laughs> this is the final result. And then um but trust me, I have a girlfriend before. Uh, <laughs> I have a girlfriend before, and she was a stupid. <laughs> so, and she loved Winnie the Pooh so much. Wow, she loves Winnie the Pooh. Wow, so a stupid shit. We <laughs> love, she loves Winnie the Pooh. But, uh, but you know, I hate that. I hate Winnie the Pooh because I think Winnie the Pooh is the most ridiculous cartoon I have ever seen. You know. You know, a piglet, a tiger, and a bear, they can live together and no one will die. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, one time I see the tiger tap on the piglet shoulder and say, Oh, you know, piglet is my best friend forever. <laughs> I always think that, oh, poor chop is my best friend forever. <laughs> this would be the last episode. And you know, you, you think the, the bear really loved the honey? No, he uses, he uses it for the barbecue. One day you go, hey, pick that cut, just come here. Come here, just come, don't ask. Come, come, come. Hey, let's call some honey. <laughs> Why I need to call honey? <laughs> because I love barbecue. <laughs> I love char siu. <laughs> and then, uh, do you know what is the most stupid thing, thing is? The most stupid thing is, as a go as man, go as male bear, he wear a cop top with no pants, and his name is Winnie. <laughs> He's very stupid. So one time she asked me, oh, you know, Tim, you have a little belly and you are so sore, you must be Winnie the Pooh. Well, I was so angry, I replied to her, hmm, you also look like Hello Kitty, but why you have an extra mouth? How about you just shut up? You will look like Hello Kitty. <laughs> And then, uh, 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 what, what things you want to hear? Oh, I can hear that. You want to hear some racist thing. That's great. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and you know, you know, you know, there is a beer called Guaylo. You know, wow, there is a beer called Guaylo. Wow, it's so racist. Do you know what the owner think? The owner must be thinking, hmm, what group of people can represent drunk and alcoholic? Must be those white guys! <laughs> and they use it as a brand name and put it in each supermarket. And no one thinks there is a problem. Even my friend, she is a girl, talk to me and say, oh, you know, I like Quayle so much. Hmm, you Hong Kong girl. <laughs> yeah. Wow, a, a beer called Guaylo is really racist. It's like a camera called Ching Chong Ching Chong. <laughs> Ching Chong Ching Chong, wow, it's so racist. And then, um, but do you know what is the good part is? The good part is, as long as you hold a beer on the street, you can say anything. You can say anything you like. You can say, Guaylo sucks! <laughs> wow! I just bought a quail, it's so small! Finish it in one minute! I don't like quail liquid in my throat! <laughs> oh yeah, I love that. Just kidding, I like quail beer. <laughs> and uh, let, let me see what is my last joke is. Oh, my, uh, my, my last joke is... Uh, my last two joke is... <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, I'm a straw man, so I will go, I, I always go to the gym, I always go to the gym, and then one, and then you know, you know, in a Hong Kong gym room, there is a sauna inside, not inside the gym, but inside the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> in traditional, uh, in, in a traditional situation, 
men always just get naked and go inside. And then I'm a traditional guy and, and I'm full of confidence. So, so I just get naked and go inside. So I lie down, so confident, and just compare, compare, come on. And then, <laughs> and then one time, uh, one person just get in. The person uh, must be a guy. Uh, just get in. <laughs> just get in, also get naked, and keep looking at me, keep looking at me. And he was like, Ooh. Ooh. Oh, <laughs> it's very scary. <laughs> so, so, so what I need to do, I, I just cover my penis. But it turns out this pose is more attractive. <laughs> because what he wants may be not the front side, it may be the back side. <laughs> yeah, one time I say this joke and one audience talked talk to me and say, mm, me, uh, me gay man will not like this type of you. Know, I don't like this type. <laughs> and suddenly I got offended. So I was like, no, 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 you, you, you look, look again first, <laughs> look again. <laughs> so stupid. And then, uh, because nowadays it's very dangerous, so I learned some Kung Fu. I learned, I learned Thai boxing, Thai boxing. And then uh, one time in, in the gym room, there's a, the gym room inside there is a Thai boxing to learn. And then, and then the trainer talked to me and said, mm, the first lesson, I will not teach you how to hit. I teach you how to block. Now, I hit you in right hand side three times. Block it, remember block it. And it turns out his right hand side is different from my right hand side. <laughs> <laughs> so stupid. <laughs> and then I, I don't know why, why, I don't know why people uh, just take off their shirt, <laughs> just take off their shirt when they, they play boxing. It's so stupid. I, I don't believe everyone in Thai boxing also don't scare about tickling. <laughs> yeah, so so it's so stupid. Like, mm, I need to fight to you. I need to fight. I hit you, hit you. Hey, who no! Oh, it's foul, it's foul. Oh no, no, don't do it again. Yeah, <laughs> so stupid. Okay, that's my time. Thank you very much. Tim Chan, everybody. Tim Chan, let him hear it. All right, guys, next up is one of my best friends in the scene and one of my top 20 best friends outside of the scene. Ha ha ha. He was on Comedy Central Asia and he was. That's, oh yeah, no, he was the winner of the Hong Kong International Comedy Competition 2018, the last ever Hong Kong International Comedy Competition. <laughs> They're retiring it, yeah. Let him hear it. They're very funny. Give him two. One more time here for Tammy Chan, everybody. Tammy Chan. And his brother, Tim Chan. Dude, every time Tim asks me to go to the gym with him, we end up in the sauna. He's like, dude, look again, look again. I'm like, dude, Tim, stop it, stop it. You have a... Very weird looking asshole, I don't know. Uh. <laughs> Guys, I think we're fine. I know we're doing this like a recording thing now, but I think we're okay. Uh, Cause like, it's, it's weird, like having COVID in Hong Kong, I just look at the rest of the world now, like a really shitty time machine that only goes back a few months. Like in the US, cause it's winter time, they just started like grabbing all and hoarding the toilet paper again. And I'm like, hoarding toilet paper? That's so February 2020. <laughs> You guys gotta get with the times. I don't know, we're gonna beat the fourth wave, we're fine. We beat three of them already, the fourth one's gonna be fine. No more dancers, we're gonna be fine. I think, like, the one thing I learned about the coronavirus was that during COVID, uh, white people aren't scared of anything. <laughs> which is why they're gonna die first. <laughs> like, Asians think everything will kill them, and that's why we're gonna live forever. <laughs> like, you guys ever see the show Jackass? No Asian people. <laughs> Like some white people are scared of the dark, Asian women are scared of the sun, okay? It's like, well, that's why the beaches are still closed. Like fuck that shit, I don't know. I don't know, we're gonna be fine. We just wanna travel again, I wanna get out of the city. We just wanna get out. Everyone in the city is just like, I wanna go on vacation, I wanna leave Hong Kong, I wanna leave Hong Kong. And they're like, hey, you can go to Singapore. And we're like, we're fine right here, thank you very much. We'd rather all get COVID again and not go to Singapore anymore. We'd just rather go on another staycation, we're fine. 
I, I like I know Hong Kong's doing well because everyone in my Instagram, at least uh, before last week, was like all photos of them on staycations, and it's always the same photo. You know, they're at the W, they're at the Ritz, they're by the infinity pool, they're leaning over, they're turning around, it's like hashtag blessed. <laughs> it's always the same photo, and it's bullshit because it's an illusion. That's all an infinity pool is. It's an illusion because all an infinity pool actually is is a, a, a regular pool is is a pool ends here. And the water ends here, and you're like, that's where the pool ends. But in infinity pool, the pool ends here, and the water overflows just a little bit. You're like, where does the pool end? Infinity. And that doesn't happen for any other water feature. I've never been to the toilet. I'm taking a piss. I flush the toilet. It overflows like, where does the toilet end? Infinity toilet. Hashtag staycation from my bathroom. Also, by the way, Tim, like, it's weird that Winnie the Pooh dresses like that. Have you not been on any Zoom calls? I'm only in crop tops, not wearing pants. It's my entire life now. I don't know. Uh, what else happened in the last few months? Uh, my parents moved in with me. That was fucking weird. Yeah. So here's what happened. Like, true story. Uh, I moved out of my parents' place a long time ago. I moved out of my parents' place like 120 years ago. It's been a while. And recently, like every now and then, my parents would stop by my place because of an extra room. But I don't like when my parents stop by because they'd always like move things around and like mess with things. Like, mom and dad, I don't like how you're changing the way I live. And they're like, hey, Garen, it's one family, two systems. We're going to be fine. <laughs> and then recently, last year, they decided to move in for good. And I'm like, mom, I don't want you guys living here. And they're like, hey, we technically own you. I'm like, I don't have a good argument for that. <laughs> And so I started writing signs on my wall, getting angry at them, like, freedom for Garen, revolution of my flat. And they're like, you're not even allowed to say that anymore. So now I'm getting kicked out of my apartment. And guys, that is a joke about my parents moving into my apartment and nothing else. NSL guy, did that pass muster? He's nodding, I think we're fine, I think we're fine. Either he's fine or I gotta look at Tim's ass some more, or get married and we gotta move to America, it's okay. It's okay, I don't know. Uh, I'm actually like not, I live in this weird dichotomy, like I don't like the Chinese government as much, but I really want China to take over the world. I think that'd be pretty cool. Like I think it'd be cool, like, you know, white kids have to grow up learning about Chinese history. We can start appropriating white culture, redo all of your shows, make like Law and Order Beijing. First episode, a guy's in the interrogation room, it's like, dun dun, he did it. Uh, <laughs> If he wasn't in the interrogation room, why, why would he be there if he didn't do it? I don't know. Did that pass muster? I just got to run through all these jokes by him. I don't know. It's going to be a weird time. I got some new thing. Oh, yeah. Actually, it's not been that bad of a year. Uh, guys, I got to be in a Mercedes-Benz commercial this year. Yeah. And this is what happened. I got cast, uh, and they are like, oh, you're a comedian, and you can speak Chinese and English, so we wanted you in this ad. Uh, and, and I was like, oh, but you guys, you guys saw me at a show, and I was at a show with Vivek, why didn't you get Vivek to do the ad? And they're like, well, Vivek has been in the protest a lot. He's been in the front lines. He's got a big profile. And you know, we have some customers you know, who are slightly on the blue side, but it's fine. We want to be equal to everyone. So we didn't want someone too yellow. That's why we picked you. And I was like, I'm also very yellow. And they're like, nobody knows who the fuck you are. So it's, uh, it's fun times for me, I guess. That's fun. That's, that's like the one the comedians are like, yeah, fuck you. Thank you yeah, yeah. Hang on. I got not paid enough to own a Mercedes Benz, I'll tell you that. Uh, I don't know, I just wanna get back to like our normal Hong Kong crazy, that's all I give a shit about. I just wanna go back to the normal crazy shit we have in Hong Kong. Like, you know like, everyone else in the world right now, everyone else are like, please no typhoon, please no typhoon. We're like, please be Monday, please be Monday. No more bullshit Sunday typhoons. I don't know, you miss, what is your name? Lexi. And, and what job do you have working for Tim somehow? Um, I'm his stylist. You're his stylist. <laughs> <laughs> that's why that's why Tim has no money. You're the only stylist he can afford. <laughs> He's like, I just wear shirts to go to the gym. Uh, what? Fine, we, we met on Tinder. You met on Tinder. <laughs> and you're like, I won't date you, but just give me a random job. Stylist? Yeah, sure, that one, that one. I'll make sure other people won't swipe right on you on Tinder. It's fine. It's fine. Uh, Le Le Lexi, where are you from? You're from Hong Kong. Were you born in Hong Kong? How Asian do you feel usually? Depends. depends like when you're hanging around white people you're like yeah I'm white too no what do you mean by depends um, well if I'm on a date I'll be totally Hong Kong girl so he's paying bill oh nice nice it's a very Hong Kong answer it's a very Hong Kong answer I like that Tim how much was the bill at the end of the night 
Well, that's why she's got a full-time job now, okay? No, because like, I was born in the US. I moved here when I was really young. Some days I feel really Asian. Some days I don't feel that Asian. And I want to real, feel really Asian. I want to respect my roots. You know, I want to make, like, be proud of being Asian, especially when our friends come visit me from like US, UK, Australia. I want to show off. I want to do really Asian things. Yeah, so usually I take them to a dim sum restaurant. You guys know the deal? White people look at the menu. They can't read shit. And that's when I get to go, don't worry. I got you. And I'll grab the menu, look up and down, and be like, okay, okay. Okay. English menu, please. <laughs> Sometimes that's as Asian as I get. That's me not paying the bill either, okay. I don't know. Things are going weird. What else happened this year? Oh, I got married this year. That was a thing. Yeah. <laughs> She's not here. You don't have to do that. Tim's laughing too hard. He's like, yeah, she doesn't even get paid as a stylist. Uh, it was weird. I knew I had to get married because, like, like, we were dating six years before we got married, and we traveled a lot together, and everywhere we went around the world, uh, she would get on a plane, and the first thing she would do is look up and rewatch the movie Crazy Rich Asians. Yeah, make some noise if you guys like Crazy Rich Asians. Yeah, some people saying, yeah, Bob ain't saying shit, because he knows Crazy Rich Asians had no Indians in it. Which is fucked up, because if you live in Asia long enough, you know the Indians are the craziest, richest Asians. He's the only one wearing a suit this entire night. <laughs> like, when an Indian watches Crazy Rich Asians, the only thing crazy about the wedding was it only lasted one day. What the fuck is this shit? There's a movie about how Singaporeans are poor, that's what this is. Fuck Singapore. No one's laughing at Singapore, because we all have to move there next year. What's going on? Uh, it's funny, because it hurts. I don't know. I, uh, it's weird. We have to, like, sex is weirder when you're married. Uh, Andy's just like, what sex? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, yeah, that threw it out there. I don't know. It's like, <laughs> sex changes. You'd think nothing would change, but, like, now all the rape fantasies are different because she's technically my property. It's not that fun. It's, uh, it's, <laughs> they're not laughing at the joke. They're just laughing at Cassie. They're like, no, no, no. She, she rapes you in that scenario. Is she... <laughs> She does. That's why I gotta stare at Tim's asshole now. That's what a normal asshole looks like. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> this new lockdown's weird. We gotta be at home. Like, I've watched all of Netflix now. All of Netflix. My Netflix recommendations is for me to go outside, okay? <laughs> like, I watch the dregs. I'm not even watching the best shit on Netflix. I'm not watching, like, Queen's Gambit or, like, The Crown. I ended up watching this show called Too Hot to Handle. Yeah, if you guys don't know, Too Hot to Handle is like a reverse love island. They get the hottest people from around the world, fly them to an island, and when they arrive at the island, they think it's a dating show, but then they're told the only way to win the prize money is you're not allowed to have sex. And that's the entire game of the show. And one of my friends, Jasmine, always told me that all reality TV shows would be better with gay people, and I think that Too Hot to Handle is the only like, exception. Because if there's a gay version of Too Hot to Handle, the first episode of the show, they'd be like, you're not, al they're already fucking, they're already fucking. <laughs> 10 minutes in, the show's over. On to season two. I like how Seth is especially laughing at that joke because uh, that is not a joke about how gay people are disgusting. That is a joke about how men are disgusting. Men are disgusting. Like, Lexi, do, do you think men, do, like men on Tinder, do you think they're disgusting? What, me? <laughs> I think you're just projecting, Tim. I think you're just projecting. Have you, have you met disgusting men on Tinder? Uh, just, just, the right just the right I'll tell you, you have never met a disgusting man on Tinder because... Like, women, the guys you get to meet on Tinder, we know that women are in the room, so we have to censor ourselves. Gay guys, they just know men are talking to other men, so they can be as disgusting as possible. And just to prove this fact, a lot of the gay comics signed me up for a Grindr account and swipe right on everybody just to show me the things I would get. And there was one of the photos, I had a tattoo of a dragon on my back, and the guy just messaged me, he's like, oh, you like dragons? Well, I'd like to be dragging my balls across your face. <laughs> And that's why me and Tim are getting married and moving to America. <laughs> so, uh, Tim, I love you so much. I don't know. I, uh, it's weird. I, we were, like, planning a wedding during the uh, quarantine. Like, we had, well, there were so many things, like, we couldn't do, but we're just, like, just control the things we can do. So, uh, my, my wife, now wife, told me, uh, let's, go on a, let's go on a wedding diet. I'm like, that's, that sounds fun. That's nice. Uh, but I, I, so I decided to join my uh, wife's spin class. You know, that's fun. That's something we can do together. You listen to music, riding a bike. It's fun, right? What I didn't realize was that my wife goes to an all-women's spin class. And I'm like, you know, you're still riding a bike, you listen to music, how all-women can it be, right? Until I start hearing the mantras. Because I get to this class, I'm riding on this bike, 
And the lady in the front goes, you're an independent woman. I'm like, what? Like, say it with me, ladies. You're a golden goddess. I'm like, what? But 20 minutes of the class, the endorphins kick in. I'm like, I am an independent woman. I'm the most golden goddess in this place. And by the way, I don't know if it's because the gyms are closed, but doing that was like the most exercise I've had in two weeks. I'm kind of exhausted by that joke. Whew, I'm sweating up here. All right. Uh, I'll leave you guys on this one quick thing because I'm going to go make a call. Hi. Uh, I know you guys can edit that part out. Uh, but... Uh, like, so, so my, my wife is white, and the only reason I bring that up is because white guy's wooing. Yes, thank you. Because I'm trying to breed out the race. No. Uh, no. <laughs> China forever! That passed muster, right? Nice. Keep that bit. Uh, no, no. <laughs> the, re the reason why I mentioned she's white is uh, I read this article earlier this year that kind of went viral about the phenomenon of mixed race twins. Uh, Lexi, I don't know if you read this. Basically, two people of different races can have twins, and one comes out looking like, more like the race of the mother, and one comes out looking more like the race of the father. Which blows my mind. Because if I have twins, and one looks more white, and one looks more Chinese, I'm gonna love them both the same. <laughs> but I'm rooting way harder for the Chinese one. <laughs> Be a great way to introduce my friends, like, oh, I got mixed race twins, one looks more white, one looks more Chinese. One's a doctor, one wants to be a DJ. You can guess which one's which. I'll let you decide. Gonna name them differently too. They're like, oh my God, that's so cute. What are their names? Like, one's named Victor, one's named Huang. <laughs> like, oh, let me guess. Huang's the Chinese one. Like, that's racist. Victor's the Chinese one. In fact, if you know anything about Victor's, you know that Victor's the most Chinese name in the world. I've never met a white Victor in my life. I know 13 Victor Wongs at work alone. <laughs> All right, my name's Garen Chu. I love you. Have a great fucking night. Garen Chu, everybody. Garen Chu. That was amazing. Let him hear it. Let's keep it rolling for your next act on Up and Comer here, a rising star here in the Hong Kong comedy scene. Give it up for Ashley James. Yeah. 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 Um, so, yeah, I thought I, I tried open always with personal stories, and I wanted to tell you about the time I kind of came out to my parents. Um, so my parents sat me down, well just my mum, my mum sat me down when I was 17 years old at the table and she's kind of the one that told me, she was like, I just want to let you know it's okay if you're gay. And there's a problem there, I'm not gay. <laughs> what had happened is I was a 17 year old single virgin that went to an all boys school. She just thought I was gay. Which is a very awkward thought to have, because in two minds, sorry, in her things, in her mind, she has two thoughts. There's only two possibilities here. Her son is a single virgin, or he's so dr drowning in dick every week, but he doesn't want to say. And I love my mum thought, you know what? He's a good looking boy. He must be choking back a cock every weekend, but doesn't want to come out and say it. Uh, but then two things go through my mind. Two things are like, I love my mum. I want to please her as best I can. I'm like... Maybe I do need to be gay for a year just to make her happy. Like, I, I can choke back a cock a couple of times and it'll be fine. Or I've got to tell her. And then that's how I came out to my mum as an ugly virgin. <laughs> Nothing's really changed. <laughs> uh, but no, in, in other times, I, I, I do think I like awkward conversations. And it's not just like with my mum, I've had them. I think the most awkward conversations always revolve around sex. Uh, so I thought about the most awkward things said to me in bed. I think the top one was actually this year. It was kind of a one night stand that turned into a thing over the summer. And the first thing she said to me the morning we woke up together was, I can't wait to tell my therapist about you. <laughs> now of all the people you want to hear, maybe parents, maybe friends, therapist is not top of my fucking list of telling my performance last night. Uh, my first comment was, can we do a joint couple session? Because I'm going to fucking need one after you said that. And uh, my second one was, oh, fantastic. At least I don't have to do comedy this week. <laughs> um, but no, the, the second most awkward thing said to me in bed was a one night stand. A girl grabbed me by the balls and said, how many children do you want to have? <laughs> Which is creepy enough already for a one night stand. The second thing is the motivation behind that. She's grabbing my balls like it's equipment at a fucking rally. And I'm just sitting there going, is this motivation? Like the harder she squeezes, the more kids I'm meant to have. Also, this is one session. I'm meant to aim for twins by pumping harder. Uh, but the third most awkward thing I, I said was that it wasn't really something said to me in bed. It was something a girl asked me to do. We were dating a long, long time, almost three years. And she kind of wanted to spice things up at the bedroom. We're at university, so we didn't live together. And she asked me to do an abduction fantasy. 
Uh, for those that don't know, uh, that's when I pretend to essentially kidnap her. She asked me to kidnap her on her birthday, a weird present, uh, duct tape her, and then take her back to my apartment and have my way with her. It's the nicest way of saying rape and pillage since the Vikings came around. So having my way with her, there are two major issues there. Uh, one, I live with flatmates. I don't know how many awkward conversations with you've had with your flatmates, but I'm going to rape a girl tonight is not in my top five. So I was like, okay, I can do this one of two ways. I can tell them or I can't tell them. But I also don't want to live with people that at 2 a.m. in the morning hear screams and don't come out and ask why. I think that's more awkward than what's not going to happen there. The second thing was we lived in a small Welsh town, but we still lived about a, a mile apart. So she asked me like, to kidnap her from her place to mine, and that was two miles apart. Um, I don't drive. <laughs> don't know how much you tip your Ubers, um, but... <laughs> Going in the boots extra. <laughs> Even better at the time, I was very poor, so Uber pool was my main method of transportation. <laughs> Didn't really want to put her in the car with three other people. <laughs> uh, but no, I, I do think as well, not just only awkward things said to me, I kind of fuck up my own head as well. Because like, I have mental health issues, I do fuck up. It's not just things said to me. I'm one of those very self-destructive minds. I have a very self-destructive mind. Like, a good-looking girl will get with me, or a good thing will happen, and I'm just like, what's wrong, what's wrong, what's wrong, in my head. Uh, so like a good, a good looking girl will get with me and I'll be like, she's only with me for my money, which is weird because I'm broke. Um, but also then I'll be like, I'll give you an example. I, I had a really gorgeous girlfriend when I was like 20 years old and this girl gets with me and I'm like, there must be something wrong in her head. She's either mental or something. And, and I was right. So that's always a positive. Uh, like the first thing she did when she got back in, uh, into bed with me was like climbed next to me and said, can I call you daddy? Red flags there immediately. And my first thought in my head was, great, another gaping hole I've got to fill in her life. <laughs> um, so another one. And, and <laughs> yeah, just got it. <laughs> Not like he's a professional comedian. Because <laughs> there's two holes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> also true. Um, <laughs> but yeah, no, I, I do have a very weird dating policy. Like, I do have a really, really weird dating policy where I subconsciously try and pick people I want to fix, which is a lot like a really good dog adoption policy, essentially. I don't uh, shop, I adopt. Like, I, I don't try and get a brand new puppy straight out of the shop that will be fantastic and be perfect for me. I try and fix one. I basically get a blind puppy with daddy issues. <laughs> Uh, but I, uh, to be fair, I talk about a lot of my mental health issues on stage if you've ever seen me before. However, I do want, I, I kind of neglect the benefits sometimes. There are some benefits to having a, that voice in your head that wants to tell you you're an idiot all the time and kind of shits on you every morning. Like, I'm an arsehole. I'm an absolute arsehole. Unrelated to my mental health issues, I am an arsehole. So, which means I get into a lot of arguments. When those arguments get heated, someone will normally come up to me and do something like, you're a piece of shit, nobody loves you, no one wants you here. And the benefit of having a mental health is I can just wake up and go, ha <laughs> said that to myself this morning. <laughs> Nothing new there. Try again. <laughs> um, but no, as I say, like, I do think with mental health, you do try and need to look after yourself a lot more. Um, so I am trying to do more things to look after my health. Like my diet is definitely something that feeds into my brain that's not very good. My diet is essentially that of a six-year-old kid because I didn't eat fruit or vegetables. It's very weird. Like I only eat meat and rice mainly. My diet can be described with the word beige. Um, so I'm trying to do a thing, we've actually got him in tonight, where we're doing the uh, one week no meat challenge. So I'm trying to do that. Uh, I do recommend joining. Please give a cheer if you are joining in. Yeah. Only said that for the cheer. Um, but we are doing the one week. So I started doing my research into vegetarian meals in Hong Kong. And I realized how fucking expensive they are. Uh, like you're talking in the hundreds of dollars, especially in Central for a vegetarian meal. I don't get why they're so expensive. Like I always had money doesn't go on trees, but literally this shit came from the ground. Um, like, I don't get it. Like, it genuinely is it's, it's baffling. Like, I eat burgers at McDonald's, they're $27 for a meal, and then I can go down the road and get, like, broccoli for $50. And I'm like, my food had to eat your food first. How is my food's food more expensive? Um, so I have a new rule now, which is I won't eat anything over 60 Hong Kong dollars unless something died. I feel that's a fair way of a meal policy. Uh, so the other way I'm trying to improve as well is be less on Tinder. Like, I think that's something that really fucks up your mental health. Trying to date on Tinder is very unhealthy. Like, this year was the first year I've paid for Tinder. You can get Tinder Pro. Uh, it's something you pay for, which means now I'm officially paying to see how unattractive I am. And I can tell you now I'm getting value for money. 
Um, so as I used to say, I, I, I'm paying for Tinder, but I still swipe left more often than I swipe right. Uh, I have like three red flags on Tinder that I immediately swipe left to, which is most of Hong Kong. Uh, number one is immediately saying in your bio, I like traveling. Pointless. There's no point. Everyone loves traveling. You might as well say I like breathing, especially in 2020. Who would love the option to go Thailand, Vietnam, Cambodia, these fantastic countries, or stay in a small flat with their mum on a Zoom call with their boss? If you didn't say I like traveling, I thought you're a fucking idiot. The other one, it's a major thing in Hong Kong, is people put flags over the countries they visited or countries they lived in, and I find that very, very weird. Like, you shouldn't put those. Use your words. Um, so this, it's really weird to me. So what I started doing is in my bio is I've put in like, hundred flags and lots of people now come to me and goes oh you've been all around the world I'm like no I'm just ranking my favorite flags <laughs> I thought that's what we were all doing um, so that, that the third thing I always hate is group pictures I don't want to guess which girl I'm trying to go on a date with and like if it's only group pictures you have one or two show you have friends that's understandable but having all group pictures is not tinder that's where's Waldo and it's the easiest game of where's Waldo because it's always the fat girl <laughs> <laughs> oh, Seth, remem <laughs> Seth, Seth remembered girls exist again. Um, <laughs> uh, so the other thing I'm trying to do is read more. Like I stopped reading really at university because like you're forced to read, and that's something that really takes the love out of reading for someone. So I did my dissertation on human rights and religion. Uh, National security guy, we still yeah. Um, okay, so we can do human rights and religion. There's nothing happening in the north of China. It's fine. Uh, so we're doing uh, r human rights and religion. So I read all the holy books. I read the Torah. I read the Quran. I read the Satanic Bible, the Christian Bible. Read them all. Um, so that's that's what kind of put me out of love was like reading all these books. And one of, like to be fair, the first thing I did. So my main focus was on human rights in the Middle East and studying the Quran. Uh, so I ring my parents up and ring my grandmother up and I ring my grandmother up, telling her I'm reading the Quran and and she's old and white, which is code for racist. Um, so the first question she asked me was, I hope you're not gonna convert. I don't know about you, but that's a lack of confidence in them from me because I wouldn't convert just by reading it. Uh, not only is she racist, she has lack of faith in me. For example, she used to buy me Harry Potter as a kid. I didn't grow up being a wizard <laughs> as much as I wish. Uh, so the last thing as well, so like as well as that, like, um, I bring this girl home with me, um, basically on one night, and I forget that I'm obviously doing my dissertation reading, all the holy books are strewn throughout my room. Um, she comes in, and she immediately turns the lights off. Agreed, uh, good decision. Um, I always have sex with the lights off. I, I once had a really fit girlfriend ask me if I wanted to film a sex video, and I was like, do I have to be in it? Um, so that's a very fair, a very fair thing. So we turn the lights off, we've had sex, she turns the lights back on, completely forgot on my nightstand are three holy books. And I have never seen a girl more scared in her life. Uh, so on there, if you weren't aware, was the Quran, the Bible, and the Satanic Bible. That girl didn't know if she was about to be stone sacrificed or saved. Okay, thank you guys, that's my time, thank you very much. Ashley James, everyone, great job. Amazing. All right, guys, are you ready for your headliner of this evening? Woo! This girl, she's uh, leaving Hong Kong soon, right? In a couple of months. I know, I know, I know. See how I made you, like, you know, more sympathetic with her right before she came up so you like her more? Genius hosting. All right, guys, make some noise for the very funny Ailey Slater. Woo! Well, oh shit, I didn't realize that I was like an official headliner, but that's totally fine. I'm definitely prepared for this, extremely prepared. Um, I am gonna play some comedy songs for you, but I figured I can't just start the music. Like I need to tell you some jokes first, but because of COVID, I haven't told any jokes in about six months, so. Uh, HSBC has lots of customer service staff, which is funny, because they have no customer service. I think writing the MTR is similar to masturbation because you don't really look up from your phone until after you get off. <laughs> travel. I haven't really been able to travel during COVID. Uh, the thing about not traveling during COVID is I realized that if I can't travel, I have nothing to say to all my friends. Yeah, it turns out we're just really boring people who occasionally like to get on airplanes. 
Uh, I haven't learned much Cantonese living in Hong Kong, but I have been learning some British English. Like in America, we say three pints of beer, but in the UK, they call that breakfast. <laughs> I recently learned the difference between socialism and capitalism. So a socialist believes that important things like roads and schools and hospitals should be managed by the government, but a capitalist believes that roads and schools and hospitals aren't important. <laughs> I really wish that conspiracy theories were true because it would be super awesome if the government were smart. <laughs> Do you guys remember that Ikea horse meat scandal a few years ago? Man, that was crazy. I can't believe they weren't selling quality meat in a furniture shop. <laughs> okay, that's all of that. Who wants to hear some comedy songs? Yeah. Um, I hope that you like songs about feminism sung in the key of G. Oh, yeah. Cool. Uh, this first song's kind of an angry one, but it's fun. Um, this is about men who live on the west coast of America, and they say they're hippies, but actually they're just fucking misogynists. <laughs> you love freedom and love, and you love shouting at women from bands, and you love telling me that I should smile. Smile, smile, wow. Sorry that this is just my face. So sorry I was walking fast and taking up space. Using my body to execute an action instead of sitting back and waiting for your reaction. And you're not enlightened if you like to frighten confident women on the street. You like your girls so ethereal and sweet. Preferably underage, they ooh and ah about the size of your ear gauge. Wow, I know the truth. You're a pseudo hippie, so don't you fucking tell me to smile. Cool. All, right. All right, cool. This next one is not about feminism. Um, it's about junk boats. I miss junk boats a lot. It's a new song. What I think is funny about junk boats is that sometimes you go on a junk boat with a group of friends, and there's like seven vegan lasagnas. <laughs> But then sometimes you go on a junk boat with friends and there's like seven bags of Doritos. So that's what this song's about. Going on a junk boat with friends is rewarding, especially if you like red wine at nine in the morning. But when it's noon and it's time to eat, that lunchtime spread is looking pretty bleak. Dave brought one sandwich, but he's not really sharing it. And you're definitely fucked if you're a vegetarian. Rachel has egg salad that's got no meat in it. But it's 100 degrees out, so I still wouldn't eat it. Oh, we've got 20 pasta salads. But no one brought the forks Now you are wasted And you are hungry Just drink Prosecco Till we're back to port Kevin brought Doritos And also three pounds of rice Somebody bought a lasagna But you didn't get a slice There's five things of hummus but nothing to dip in it. There was a box of crackers, but Steve threw up in it. Arthur just brought hot sauce, but it's way too spicy. Jen thought it was ketchup, so she's feeling pretty dicey. Now we're all drunk and hungry. We're on a ship of emotions. Why the fuck doesn't Food Panda deliver to the ocean? Oh, we've got 20. Pasta salads, but no one brought the forks. Now you are wasted and you are hungry. Just drink Prosecco till we're back to port. End of song. Thank you very much. 
Cool. Um, so I just have one more song for you guys, which means I will definitely not hit the 15 minutes that I said I would do, but that's cool. <laughs> I'll just sing the chorus of this last one over and over. Uh, this song is dedicated to all the queer women in the audience. You can't see it on camera, but they're definitely there. There's some pansexual ladies, bisexual ladies, gay ladies, queer ladies. There's literally tons of hundreds of people in the audience who will totally understand this song. Um, this song is about queer women because I think queer women are amazing. I think they can do literally anything except for sit normally in a chair. You're ready to come out, congrats to you, queen. You're living your truth, you're headed where the grass is green. Lots of things are wonderful, but please do beware that coming out may affect how you sit in chairs. You don't want to cross your legs, you're not a meek girl. You're ready to take up space. You're finding your place in the world. So open up your legs, find a confident position. Congrats, now you're doing a queer lady tradition. Oh yeah, this girl knows. Maybe your thighs are wider, maybe you cross at the knees. Maybe you lean back to make you feel at ease. You might tuck one leg at a really weird angle. Bend the other knee and let your foot just dangle. Hey, look, there's not one right way to do it. Some of us sit sideways and swing our legs around. Heck, some of us get into chairs fully upside down. But the point is that once upon a time, expectations would restrain you. But now you're a fucking queer butterfly and this chair can't contain you. So of course, at this point of the song, all of you ladies are asking the exact same question. If I'm sitting down and I really want to charm Then what the fuck am I supposed to do with my arms? Raise them up and reach them out to now Place your arms on the back of the seat that's next to you Hey look man, I don't make the rules I'm not trying to say I'm some sort of gay lady attorney But sitting weird in a chair is probably part of your coming out journey So open up your legs and leave a big gap Cause you never know when a cute girl might want to sit in your lap oh, Thanks very much guys! Boom, yeah things here. Ailey Slater, everyone. Ailey Slater, that was amazing. Yeah. Let her hear it and keep it going for everyone you saw tonight. Garen Chu, Tim Lamb, Ashley James. All right, that's our show, everyone. Yep, that's the whole show. We just finished taping. Cool. Thank you all so much. Goodbye and good night. Bang. Not your age.